This morning, my topic says, Beware of false prophets. Very straightforward topic. Beware of false prophets. The Bible reading was Matthew 24, 11 to 27. Matthew 24, 11 to 27. Let me read 11 to 14 first. It says, Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. This is the word of God. Over 2,000 years ago, many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Many Christians are always puzzled about the things that are happening in the world today as if it's not already in the Bible. And so what the Bible is warning us about is, number one, you have to study to show yourself approved. If you don't study the word of God, you will be fooled by every wind of change, by every doctrine, by everybody that is professing anything. But the Bible is warning us in this time, in Matthew 24, verse 11, and it's saying many, not a few, many false prophets will rise up. All of a sudden, you just hear that this is the man that is reigning now, the reigning champion. All of a sudden, you just hear that there's a new mountain in OK this, OK that. All of a sudden, there's a new mountain on TikTok, a new mountain on Facebook, a new mountain on any of the social, Instagram. You can't sleep until you listen to that person. If you don't listen to that person, you are going to die. And then these people begin to spew all sorts of falsehoods. But you say, but pastor, this man is powerful. You don't understand what I'm saying, pastor. The man, I saw him, he pulled out egg from inside somebody's stomach. And when they broke the egg, all sorts of nails were in the egg. The man, he pulled out something. He washed blood out of the leg of somebody. The person had elephantiasis and the leg went down. There was even one that the leg of one person was shot and he started pulling the leg and pulling the leg and the leg just elongated. The Bible says, then many false prophets will rise up. Now let's look at... Um, Verse 23, it says, Then if anyone says to you, look here, is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. It's a warning from God. If you are a Christian looking for signs and wonders instead of looking for Christ, you most likely will encounter somebody that will deceive you. You should not be going about looking for miracle. You should be looking for Christ. When you meet Christ, when you find Christ, when he dwells in you, your miracle will come. Amen? Amen? I know you are not convinced, but I didn't write it. It says, many will arise. You must understand that this falsehood was from the beginning of time. Let's go into the scripture. Matthew 7, 15. Matthew 7, 15. Jesus warns us, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. These false prophets may appear righteous and spiritual, but their intentions are self-serving. It's not aligned with God. I'm talking to you mainly as a church that is full of immigrants. We can't pretend that we don't know. There are so many of us still that are addicted to people online. 
addicted to somebody calling you and say, ah, this baba is strong. This person is this. this. And then they start calling you. You start calling them. You are sending money home. They are doing special prayer. They are giving you special things to do. They are telling you what you ought to do. They are giving you all sorts of waters, all sorts of oil, all sorts of things, all sorts of potions, all sorts of concussions. And they are saying that if you wake up in the morning, don't walk to your door. Turn your back and use your back to go to your door. If you wake up in the morning, don't walk on two feet. Hop three times. And when you hop three times, then you get, you like it because they are so energetic. Even on their prayer lines, the energy is so strong. The shouting, the screaming, the punching, the fighting, the this. You did not tell the person you are calling that you are an adulterer and you are looking for solution. You did not tell them that you are sleeping with somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. You did not tell them that you don't tithe. You did not tell them that you are a thief. You did not tell them that you are a liar. You did not tell them that you are being evil to your stepson or your stepdaughter. You did not tell them that you are wicked. But if they just tell you, when you take your Bible, just take Psalm 4. Tear it out. Put it inside water. Shake it. Leave it for seven days. Drink it. What madness. What is wrong with us? What does that have to do with the word of God? You are so afraid of tomorrow. And the Bible says that you should not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You, I, I'm telling you as God is my witness, as I'm 53 years old, I've never gone to any man born by a woman to ask them about my tomorrow. I've never. And I don't need it. There's nothing they are going to tell me about my tomorrow. What I'm looking for, my father died at 43. It doesn't make him a good man or a bad man. It just happened that that's when he died. If God has ordained that you are going to die, Jesus died at 33. There's no apostle in the Bible, none, that died well by our standards. The one that was boiled was boiled. The one that was crucified was crucified. Even deacons, all of you that are deacons, they stoned Stephen to death. If Stephen went to look at his future, Apostle Paul, when the, um, Agabus told him that, oh, the man that I'm wearing his waistband, he's going to be tied. He's going, Paul said, stop it. He said, stop it. The death that God has promised me, don't prevent me from going to it. I will go. To where he said I would go. Today, if a pastor dies, they say he sinned. If somebody has marital problem, he sinned. If you did this, you say, and you are running around. Somebody will tell you to go and bring oil. Somebody will tell you to go and bring palm and ground nut. Somebody will tell you, don't you know that the person that is giving you a list of cooking ingredients, they know how to cook. Bring goat, bring palm oil, bring pepper, bring maggi, bring tomato, bring rice. Bring this, and then they will now tell you here in America that they are going on a mountain to fast for you. Meanwhile, jollof fries ingredients is complete. <laughs> because, and do I blame them? I don't blame them because it is our foolishness. Do you see what I'm saying? If you are 35 years old and you are a woman, and your mother calls a prophet, what do you think the prophet is going to say? So, Hello, ma. God bless you, ma. Yes, ma. Huh. Hmm. 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 After he shakes and says, hmm, Jesus, hey, la la, tara, bobo, sere, baba. After he says that, he says, that's your daughter. How old is she? 30. Is she married? No. That's the end. He doesn't need anything from you again. He will just say, there's a dark-skinned person in your family. Who does not have dark-skinned people in their family? That person is the one that is responsible for your daughter not getting married. And we get, and then the person will say, send me so, so, so. Then you send. Send me so, so, so. Then you send. Then the person says, you know what you are going to do? Sit down and do this and do that. Don't sleep at night. Stand up at night. Sit down at night. Turn around at night. And they start giving you all these things because the more difficult it looks to you, the more the, the, the prayer is going to work. And if God is going to help you, the daughter gets married. Who is now your God. You have now tied the blessing to the man. 
I listened to a Muslim. I was, I, that's why they said, what you hear, you can't control. I was in a car one day. I know I've shared this with you a long time. It was a Muslim cleric. He was preaching. And he said, who is it that gives people children? He said, he knows people who have spent millions to get pregnant. And they have gone to pastors and our fast to get pregnant. And it didn't happen. And then he was driving on the street and he saw somebody that was considered like a mad person. Somebody that had mental health challenges in Africa. They may be on the street. And she delivered twins. Number one, who impregnated her? Number two, how many prenatal care did she go to? How many postnatal care did she go to? My wife is a nurse. During COVID, she told me something, and she was just talking. She said, do you know that all my patients, these are people that are living on the streets. None of them were lost to COVID, not one. One of them will be intubated today. When they extubate them, is it called extubate? <laughs> when they extubate them, they will go back and be taking crack the next day. And you and I, we wash our hand every day, we clean our face, we wear masks, we do everything, and we are still afraid. God is God. I am what I am. I am what I am. I am what I am. By the grace of the Lord, concentrate on understanding the word of God. Then develop a relationship with God. And then let God begin to guide you. He may put one or two people in your life that can prophesy. I'm not saying prophecy doesn't work. But when your goal is to be seeking miracle signs, wonders, prophecy, that person will be running helter-skelter and can become prey to false prophets. Listen to what the Bible says. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. They are eating your money, playing on your insecurities, playing on your fears, heightening your tension. Half of the things they are prophesying about, they already, you already told them unknowingly. There was a case a few years ago when they used to have African days. This guy, he was some pastor guy. He had a church and this woman wanted her husband to come to America. It was in the papers. She wanted her husband to come to America, so she went to this man. So the man started praying for her, and they started doing night vigil in the man's house. So every time she came, the man would anoint her head, pray for her. Then later, said, you have to take off your top, anoint it, pray for her. Then later, she had to take off her clothes and started praying for her. Then he said, you have to put in a spirit, then started sleeping with her. He kept sleeping with her. You are laughing, but it's, the woman is part of us. She's, she said she was in America. She was not, this is somebody that intelligent. These people can hypnotize. There's the art of hypnosis. And this woman started sleeping with this man, and the husband never came. Then she got fed up and said, ah, Lord, think about it. You, are, you love your husband so much that you want him to come. And somebody is telling you that I'll be sleeping with you to help you bring your husband. Don't you now see that the devil is a winner in that area? But if you believe God and you pray to God and you do everything, you file your papers, you do what you are supposed to do, you, you thank God. You, but once you are saying that, any, then if I told you that there's one man that did it for me, my own wife came immediately, then you go there. The man starts telling you, hop on one leg. Do this. Bring candle. This is demonic. And as much as I'm saying it to you as members of this church, I've been preaching this same message for the 12 years I've been pastor here. People are still doing it. They're still looking. They call it one to you, Bole. You are putting your eye all over different places. I hope you won't get blind. The Bible says they are mm. ravenous wolves. A lot of young women have been abused by these evil people. We have to be careful. How do you know that these people are false prophets? Ask God for a discerning spirit. John 4, 1. 
John 4 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. If I, your pastor, no matter how many tongues I preach, if I call you to my office and tell you to take off your clothes that I want to pray for you, you should slap me. So that whatever is wrong with me will reset. I authorize you. Pow! The whole brain will reset. What nonsense. If you are coming for prayer, you are a woman, and then I'm holding your hand, and I'm holding your hand, and looking in your eye tomorrow, what am I looking for? Pray the prayer you pray. Lay hands and go away. There are things that we know cannot be of God. God cannot tell you to do something that is contrary. The Bible says test every spirit. Nobody should be calling you to go and get gather pepper and tomato. And what, where in the Bible are you going to justify this nonsense? Even handkerchief and oil. The Bible did not do it in that way. You raise up your, your own handkerchief, you raise it up. And you believe God that the same spirit that worked for the handkerchief of the apostles can work for you. The shadow, it's not that you are going to be paying somebody that when you walk, my shadow heals people, so pay me, then my shadow will be healing you. No, there's no way in the Bible that it works like that. The Bible is warning us, test all spirits. Don't be carried away by magic. If you go to a psychic, I'm telling you, these people that have the senses and they are messing up with witchcraft, even here, they will tell you things about yourself that you didn't know. And if you are easily convicted because somebody said, because, thank you, because somebody said that, um, let me use my own example. My father died, my mother is single, I have five children, and I'm just going in the subway. Somebody just said, good afternoon, sir. I said, oh, good afternoon. I said, mm. I said, I said, mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, because that's what I'm going to say. I do it because those things don't move me. He said, mm -mm -mm. I said, mm -mm -mm. then we're good. So we're good. He said, your father died when you were young. I said, it's true. He said, your mother has five children. I said, it's true. I'm the only thing I'm going to go, Papa, Papa. No, it's, it's true. He said, where you are going, um, you are a lawyer. I said, ah, do you know what I will do? I will not even ask him, how did you know? I said, thank you very much. Have a good day. And I, will, I don't want to know the next day. I don't want, I don't want to know it because I don't believe that the spirit, God is not sending you to me in the subway to be, if God has a message for you, he will tell me to. And you will confirm it for me. I would rather you just walk by me and say, oh, God bless you, sir. Um, I don't know, my spirit just tells me to tell you that where you are going today, be careful and this, 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 this. I'll say thank you and he'll walk away. He's not expecting anything from me. He's not trying to prove. I will know whether where I'm going to is something that I should not go to and it will, it will connect. Do you understand what I'm saying? When somebody is trying to prove to you that he's seen, sometimes it's just scary to me because they know they can grab you. All of you have heard the stories of somebody. I remember my wife told me one, one guy just when she was in Nigeria a long time, the guys told her, oh, this happened. And it was true, everything. So as soon as my wife got down from the bus in those days, the guy got down after her. So she told him, if you don't stop following me, I will shout kidnapper on your head. And everybody, it's not, because what he was saying was true. But we also know of cases where the guy can hypnotize you before you know it, you go, one of, somebody told me this, somebody that I know in this church, the, the mother just came home, went into her house, took all her gold, didn't talk to anybody, packed everything, went out, entered public transport, went back to wherever that person was and gave them everything. It's when she got back home, she said, what happened? They said, what do you mean what happened? She said, ah, I just, ah, ah, then she woke up. Can that be of God? Somebody that will tell you to go to your house, empty your bank account, take all you. These people are using witchcraft. 
So if you don't even, it's just like the link on, on the phone where somebody sends you a phishing link. They say, your package from Amazon is canceled. Then you go and click it. <laughs> you that you are not expecting any package. It's what you went to be looking for in a package that you are not expecting. They, or they say you have won one billion. Is that how they win it? I say let them keep it. I say let them keep it. Let me tell you something. I'm do, I was doing something. One of our pastors is doing something. And um, a church, one of the churches wanted to buy a building and they, I was involved trying to help them. So I met with the guy. And as we were talking about the building, I'm, I, God is my witness. The man now said he has a business in Nigeria. This is a Jewish guy, real Jew, Orthodox Jew. So I said, good, so let's continue. So like we kept talking about the transaction. He said, oh, the, the guy is a billionaire. I said, so he told me they want to, they are looking for partner. So I said, sir, I don't, I don't, I'm not, he said, it's millions that if I help him, I said, I don't want to help you. He said, I don't want to be rich. I said, I'm already rich. He said, I don't want more money. I said, I don't want. So we continued the transaction again. He came back again. The next day when I saw him again, I met with him in his office. He said, oh, I should please that if I can, because I'm not in, I didn't click the link. You understand what I'm saying? Once you don't click the link, it cannot enter into you. I said, I'm not interested. He said, oh, but you can, look, listen to me. And what is he even talking about? Some bingo. But he, he wanted to explain it. But I make sure he didn't explain it. Because I don't need his money. He make it rich. And adds no sorrow. I have never prayed to have a private jet. I keep laughing. I said, but I've been praying for all of you that you will have private jet. I will enter it for free. Then you will be paying the pilot. You will be paying the... So you can you pray your own prayer. I pray now. I'm not looking for anything special. Everything you need to protect your children is in the Bible. Everything you need to protect your marriage is in the Bible. Everything you need to protect your health is in the Bible. Are there anointed men and women of God that can join their faith with yours? Yes. Are there prophets of God that can prophesy and warn you about impending harm? Yes. But there are also false prophets. The Bible says, test every spirit whether they are of God. True prophecies always align with the word of God. If you come and tell me something, I want to back it up with scripture. Nobody can ever come. You can't even come. You say, Pastor, and when you wake up in the morning, turn around three times. For what? For what? If you want to talk to me, you say, Pastor, please pray fast. That's in the Bible. Pastor, you should be praying more. It's in the Bible. Pastor, be careful of wolf in sheep. Of course, we have to be careful. And we can test it, test it, test every spirit. I pray God gives us understanding in Jesus' name. The word of God is the authority. Then, the second part of the test is whoever is trying to help you, check their lives. Do they exhibit the fruits of the spirit? This thing is not um, do as I say, not as I do. What are the fruits of the spirit? The fruits of the spirit, the Bible tells us, are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. The person that is preaching to you has six wives. Two of them, when you went to see the Baba, they were beating each other outside the house. Is that peace? The person you went to meet, you have to, he wants to prosper you. This man is telling you that when you come, come with groundnut oil, <laughs> pepper soup, <laughs> um, all these things. When you come with it, he said that you will become a billionaire. But where you went to meet him, you had to park and then enter motorcycle because there's no road to the place. And when you got to the house, it was smelling, filthy. If he could prophesy about, why didn't he do it for himself? Eat this, eat that, swallow this, 
swallow that. Many of us, not as you are watching me and online, many of you don't sleep at night anymore. Because the time zone where you are joining all sorts of places is different from your own time zone. The one that is in your time zone, you don't join. Because Koshano. You know I'm telling you. Yeah, we're telling each other the truth. I am not on fire. Shannon means fire. Holy Ghost fire! I can do it. I can do it. I know how to do it. I mean, look, I can. I can switch it up. I can speak like if I'm American. I could change my accent. I could speak this way. I could ensure that you understand what I'm saying. I could pretend. I could fool you. Or I could speak the way that I'm natural. Niger, you know, I'm a Nigerian boy, Yoruba boy. I can speak like that. And I can start doing demonstration for you. I can start running like, and you guys will get emotional. Ah, baba, and I will be jumping. I will fire you up. Come on. Let's go. Let's say, Jesus, if you want to do it, listen to me now. Listen. Get up. If you are just Everybody to their style. But you must search the scripture, the word of God. If you are living wrong and somebody is charging you up, you are emotionally charged but spiritually empty. And the person that's charging you up may not even be a false prophet. The anointing that God gave to that person is manifesting it the way that God gave it to him. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that person is fired up. Pastor Fadel is never going to be running up and down. He's a PowerPoint guy. That's the way he operates. Daddy Gio is never going to jump up and down because that's not his own anointing. But it's not who is preaching to you that matters. It's whether you are receiving the word of God. Don't encourage pastors to become who they are not just to collect your money. Listen to me. Nobody, all of you here, if I want to collect a thousand dollars from you today, I will collect it. Except you don't have it. What are you talking about? But I want to make heaven. I, can, I know I can just go to this one. I say, ah, Sister Runke, you know, God is talking to me now. And if I call her five times a day, she says, ah, Pastor, who is so concerned about me? He's so concerned about me. I say, so, 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 so. You need to so, 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 so. You so. The person that sold last week, she's now married, has three children, has 44 kids. Last week, somebody brought one million. You say, say if I try with 1,000 and I lose it, it's okay. But if I try and I get it, let me try. Who do you want to send to hell? It's not me. I'm not going to hell because of anybody to be doing theatrical and jumping up and down. The Bible says beware. That's why teaching. Go and look at the ministry that we belong to. The person that brought us up in ministry, Pastor E. Adeboe, is a teacher of the word. So what he did is that he now replicated himself. And that's why when the era of law was there, all these people, they used to do their tassels down. The, the Pharisees, they wear the best breastplate and they are not righteous. They wear their band, they wear this, they write scripture on the four corner of their house and they are committing adultery. Wanting to stone the woman that was caught in the act of adultery but not stoning the man. This is the hypocrisy that people respond to. So Jesus came and said, no, I'm not interested in just the signs and the wonders. I'm interested in the circumcision of the heart. Yes. Because you could come before God. You can carry cow, carry this, carry that, but inside your heart is filthy. How many places in the Bible, in the New Testament, did you see all these elaborate things because we are now carrying Christ, the Holy Spirit, in our hearts. Be careful. What are you looking for that you don't have? You want financial breakthrough. Don't even, just Google. Scripture 
on financial breakthrough. It will list scripture. Then start reading the scriptures. Come to house fellowship. Discuss what we learned, what we discussed today in Sunday school. I wish you were here. Because many people will continue in error. When you are solid on the word of God, you are unshakable for the enemy. The enemy only prays on semi-Christians, Christians that are half and half. Listen to me. It will be harsh what I'm going to say. You must want to get married. You must do everything in your power to get married if that's your desire. You must go to the programs, do this, read, pray, but God forbid, if you don't marry, it's not going to be the end of the world. You must want to have children. Pray to God, but don't let anybody start giving you tadpole and rats and things to eat in the quest for these children. Immigration status, you want it to change. Kneel down, pray to God. If it changes, glory be to God. If it doesn't change, glory. There are U.S. citizens that died yesterday. Abi, is it only non-U.S. citizens that have been dying? What will you say about the Jewish children that went to a music festival and they just went and caught all of them and they kidnapped them? What will you say about somebody that was sitting in their house and a car just came and killed them inside their house? You pray against what you don't want. But don't let anybody hold you that if you don't... There are some people, and if you are in this church, stop it. If you don't speak to a particular person in a day, you can't survive. Baba, I have a job interview. They say, ah, let me go on the mountain for you. For what? Baba, I want to stand up. Let me go on the mountain for you. Baba, then why, why aren't you not talking to God? If you can talk to somebody so much, why not talk? The Bible says we should also weigh. Is this person that I'm dealing with? I told you my testimony. He's not here and God is my witness. About 15, 20 years ago, 15, 18 years ago, Pastor Fadel came to America, um, to New York. I was the designated driver. I went to pick him up. So when I got to the airport, I was standing there. He came out. He, I, I opened the door. I put his bag in the back. I told him to sit in the back. He said, no. He sat next to me. So I carried him. We took him to Triple H. As soon as he entered the car, he started praying under his breath. I looked, you know, from the corner of my eye, I'm looking at him. I said, this born again, shall I? <laughs> you know, in my mind, though. So he was doing his prayer. I, just, I wasn't a pastor. I was just an ordinary church boy. So I didn't need any anointing. So I took him. I said, oh, the building we are buying, the Triple H you are at now. So we took him there. The place was like a dumpster. When we got, then, then when he finished his own private prayer, I said, oh, brother, God bless you, my brother. Thank you for picking me up. And then he prayed again for us to go. When we got to Triple H, I said, so this is the place, sir. I said, um, you know, it looks bad now. He said, no. He said, don't say that. I said, this is beautiful. Every other person we brought, they said, the place is bad. Now why do we want to buy the place? He said, this is beautiful. Ah. Then as soon as he got out of the car, I'm watching him again. No, he's not shouting. He's not disturbing me. He's just praying. He's walking. They say, eh. So I kept quiet. I'm following him. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. Then he said, oh, my brother, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this building. You have given it to these children. We thank you for the walk. We thank you for this brother that came to pick me up. He finished praying. We went. I took him to his hotel, Marriott. When I got to the hotel again, we got down. He prayed. I said, this man said. So we prayed. I carried his bag. I took it to his room. You see, all of us have done it. Some of you that are doing prayer, you think you are doing it. We did it. When we got to the room again, he said, my brother, let's pray. Then we knelt down. We pray in the room again. I said, ah. So I prayed with him, and then I left. Then anytime he calls me, he, but the life that me, oh, I don't know about it, but the interaction I've had with him, if he wants to pray for me, I will tell him to pray. Because I see his character. I see peace. I see joy. I see gentleness. I see patience. When we went, I mean, this has happened often. I laugh about him when that. Everywhere we go, he, he always does. He's a computer guy. He has done all his PowerPoint. Then he called us. He said, please, can you just make sure all this building in the back? Can you? Whenever Pastor Fidel comes here, don't let this repeat. Oh. So we gave us, he said, please, man, this, this. 
Then he came again. He said, um, bro, and he would say, sir, everything is sir. Brother Oshikolu, I said, yes, sir. He said, sir, sir, sir. We say, sir, to each other. He said, please, sir, can you um, make sure that the PowerPoint is good? Every, I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I went to them. I said, make sure the PowerPoint. As soon as the man wanted to preach, slide one, they are looking like television. Slide two, they, are look, they didn't do it. Then the man started to sing. He told us, he said, whenever he's getting angry, he begins to sing, you are the mighty God. The great, okay, thank you. But he was angry. He wasn't happy because he told us that we should please make sure it is well organized. That's the kind of man I want to follow. I don't want to follow a man that when it's short time, he's fully charged. But when I see him, when the lights are down, he will look at me and say, you are a foolish person. You are a stupid. Bah! He will beat his wife, beat his husband, beat everybody. But when it comes for showtime, how can that person be talking? How can God use that person to be my prophet? You must test all spirits. You don't know what they are doing at home, but at least the one we know, we know. I pray God gives us understanding. I'm feeling that some of you are getting angry. But I will tell you all the same. 2 Peter 2 1 cautions us. But where there were also false prophets amongst people, even as there will be false teachers amongst you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies. It's very important to understand what he's saying here. I'm talking about 2 Peter 2 1. There will be, it's not that there may be. Like there's one pastor, Jew always talks, but he doesn't say anything. This guy says grace. He says that's such a dangerous teaching. They say once you are born again, you are born again forever. You can continue in sin. It doesn't matter because grace covers you. They bring in false heresies. Like the Jesus turned water to wine. A, a powerful preacher will convince you that wine is good, alcohol is good. A powerful preacher will convince, convince you, like we're talking in Sunday school today, that you should multiply wives unto yourselves because you are trying to help the female population. Is it you that you will help the female population? It's God that created them. God will help them solve their own problem. One wife, one good thing. Two wives, two problem. If you get it, you get it. Amen? Now you want to multiply wives to yourself. Imagine what happened to Solomon? They turned his heart away from God. I gave you an example before. You have one wife, three children. Your last child is the one that can take over the company because he has what it takes. Your first child is a musician. Pop music, you know that that's what that one wants. But if you have two wives... The wife of the, the son of the first wife, whether it's a pop musician that God put in his heart or not, he must head the company and ruin the company. Because you say, my son is the first. But if it's one wife and one child is not ready, the mother knows that the last child is her child. The first child is her child. The middle child is her child. And they will make arrangements to make sure it works for everybody. Because the two have become one. When you are multiple, it will not be one. Don't let them fool you. All of them that say, oh, they love each other, sister wives is a lie. When, <laughs> when it gets down to it, everybody will look after their own children. Even when I do marriage counseling, I warn people. I say, don't go and report your spouse to your parents. You can report your spouse to her parents because her parents will still love her anyway or him more than you. But when you report to your own parents, after you have forgiven your spouse, your parents are still remembering that that spouse did something to you and they will not let go. Beware of false prophets. Strengthen discernment. Ask for the spirit of God to come upon you if you look at John 16, 13, it is the spirit of God that guides us. You must cultivate a lifestyle of intimacy with God. It is through prayer, fasting, and please don't make any mistake. Don't mix up what I'm saying. 
you can join any prayer line that is of God. You can have a pastor. I listen to Apostle, my wife knows, every night I listen to Apostle Selman. He's not a reading pastor. But I have tested what he has been saying. And based on what he has said, I'm okay with it. It aligns with the word of God. I don't listen to Pastor Adeboe. I study Pastor Adeboe. That one is in a different space. That one is that I'm looking at this life of humility. I'm looking at this long career in ministry. I'm looking at this impact that one man, God has used him to impact his generation. I'm looking at the fact that one man left Lagos and went to kilometer 46 in the bush when everybody said it will not work. And we have seen the results. Has it not worked? There will be a redeemed Christian church of God in every nation on the face of the earth. Is it not happening? We've tested it and we have seen. When I was in Ebutemeta in 1992, he looked at all of us and said, all of you here, you are going to be pastors in different countries. And we were saying, are we not pastors? Go and listen to Daddy Joe's testimonies. When they dropped him off, if you follow Open Heavens, when they wanted to buy the land in Dallas, they had a few acres. He said, drop me here, leave me here overnight. That aligns with the word of God. He didn't tell them, bring pepper soup, bring tomato, bring egg, bring... No, he stayed there. He said, when he was praying at night, God said, continue to walk. As far as the soles of your feet will walk, you will claim it and you will own it. In America, a country that doesn't be, that's not even ours. Today, the redeemed Christian church of God, in that same place, the Jesus said that night he walked. That he walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. That when it was getting cold, then he had to go back. They just left him in a van. He said, leave me here. If you want to hear the true testimony, full testimony, he saw one house. God says, I will give you that house. In Dallas. And he kept walking. Then he didn't say anything. Then he told the boys that came with him, the people that brought him to the land, he said, God said. He said, ah, this is not Nigeria, daddy. <laughs> daddy, this is not Nigeria. No, 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 no. Two years later, the church that was buying maybe 100 acres had now acquired almost 1,000 acres. As many feet as he walked, we have it in Dallas. Then the owner of that building, the now, the now man now put it for sale. I'm giving you, I'm diverting now. That's prophecy. He now called, they now said, oh, let's try and buy the house. So they, they, do you know that our daddy who came here two years ago said God told him this is his building, this house, he will give it to him. The man said, why didn't you come earlier? For two years, my spirit has been saying, let's sell the house, don't let's sell the house. Let's sell. If you had just opened your mouth, I would have sold it. That's daddy Gio's house in, in Dallas now. God told him a long time ago. When we had Holy Ghost Convention here in Madison Square Garden that they treated us so badly, Gio said, we are never going to have convention again in somebody else's land. We go to Dallas. The first time we went to Dallas, if you went with your shoe, you would not come back with your shoe. It was mud. It was all of us. What is that? Did you put it? Go, they go there now. Redeemer's University is alive and well. Go there now. Redeemer's Credit Union is alive and well. That's prophecy. That is testing it. We have say, he said it that God said and God showed. Look, stop following people that are discredited. Don't let anybody use your life to play Ludo. They just roll the dice, throw it. Ah, I see that where you are going, you shouldn't go. You say, okay, I will not go. Oh, go, you go. You are not testing it with the word of God. I pray God gives us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophecy is by itself is not bad. Brethren, all I'm saying this morning and as I close is that the Bible is the word of God. The Bible has clearly told us that in the last days, false prophets will rise. The Bible has warned us that we should test 
every prophecy with the word of God. But how do you test what you don't know? If you are going to come to God, what should you do? You must believe. You must believe that he is. And you must believe that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. But if you believe he is and you never studied his word, how do you know what is right and what is wrong? This word of God has never changed. The Bible tells us Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Let me quickly end by saying this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Prophecy one. You don't need any other prophecy. God is telling you today that if you believe, whosoever, if you believe in God and you believe in Jesus, you will have everlasting life. Prophecy two. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved you and your household. So if there's a challenge in your household, check yourself. Do you really believe in Jesus? Are you following him? Are you obedient to him? And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I don't need pepper soup. My God shall supply all your needs and all my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Matthew 6.33 Matthew 6.33 says but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. The things you are looking for up and down. Have you asked yourself, have I sought first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. That's a prophecy. It's an instruction. Do you trust in the Lord? Are you leaning on your own understanding? Many of us that are in different kinds of jams, I don't want to give examples. It's because we used our own understanding. I use a little Yoruba again, a dogma see. And that dogma has become a problem till now. All we need to do is ask for mercy. If you lean on God, there is a blessing attached to it. Isaiah 41.10, Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Fear not. Many of these false prophets, what do they pray on? Fear. You are afraid that your child will do this. You are afraid that your spouse will do this. You are afraid that you will not get this. You are afraid that, and they, 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 they smell that fear and they pounce. The Bible says, fear not. John 14, 27 says, John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And finally, Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorites says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I want us to rise to our feet this morning.